What's up board gamers? Thank you for checking out our review of Trails of Tucana. This is a family weight flip and fill game with the following description. Each player is given a map of the island Tucana, showing its villages and important sites. The positions of the villages are randomised for each player so every game will provide a unique puzzle. The mechanisms in this game are network and route building, paper and pencil and bingo elements. In Trails of Tucana, players are drawing routes onto a map of an island to join sites and harbours together to claim routes and score points. Each player will take a sheet of paper with a picture of an island on it and a pen or pencil. The island is made up of four different types of terrain hexes, which are sand, trees, water and stone. Each of the ten harbours around the outside of a player's island is given a letter between A and E. Each island that the players receive is initially given a different distribution of where the harbours are stationed, so no two islands will look the same. Players will be attempting to join up matching routes throughout their turns, for example joining Harbour A to Harbour A or Harbour C to Harbour C. And a player is selected as the Mayor who will turn over two terrain cards at the start of each turn. If the two terrain cards that are revealed are a mountain and a sand card, this means players can join up any two hexes on the island that match these terrain types. There are five different sites to see on the island and each one can be found twice in different locations. Sites such as a toucan, a yeti or a sea monster can be found in the game. Players should use their revealed territory cards to not only connect harbours but also to connect these different sites back to their harbours to score mid-game and end-game points. One highly enjoyable aspect of the game is that connecting two of the same sites back to any villages on the board provide players with a free road which can be vital for bridging the gap in areas of the board that are proving hard to reach. Once a single card is left in the deck, it is the end of round one and players score all of the points from their routes in the game so far. The deck is reshuffled and round two is then played in the same way with both round one and round two points being scored at the end of this final round. Each time a harbour route is connected, players claim points on their player sheet and if they are the first to do a particular route, for example D to D, then they are able to claim a card that provides a bonus for themselves. At the end of the game, players add up all the points from their routes and bonus cards and the player with the most points wins. The things to be mindful of are that you will eventually run out of sheets from the gamepad in the box, so it could be worth laminating some island sheets and using them with a dry white pen or photocopying additional player sheets for use in the future. It's also easy to forget about the bonus cards, only to remember after someone else claims that route you've already completed. Finally, after many plays of the game, it can feel slightly samey with its simple route connections. The things we like about Trails of Tucana are that it has a satisfying gameplay for the short play time of 45 to 60 minutes. It plays up to 8 people and doesn't overstay its welcome as all players are completing their routes simultaneously. There is also a harder island to complete that comes in the box, playing over 3 rounds instead of 2. Here at Board Game Picks, we give Trails of Tucana an 8.5 out of 10 for being one of the best roll and write or flip and fill games currently available on the market. Thanks for checking out our review of Trails of Tucana.